Not long after the death of his uncle, Gaius Marius, Caesar's father, while putting on his shoes, also died unexpectedly. With Sulla engaged in the war against Mithridates and Caesar's father-in-law, Cinna, in firm control of the city, Caesar became paterfamilias of his family at the tender age of 15. This made him responsible for the safety and well-being of his mother, Aurelia, and his new bride, Senilla. By 81 BC, however, his father-in-law was dead. The Marians were broken and scattered. Sulla was dictator of Rome. As a priest, who could participate in neither politics nor war, Caesar thought himself safe from the proscription lists. But eventually the young paterfamilias was unexpectedly summoned by the dictator. Caesar, dressed in his priestly robes, shoes made of felt, and apex head covering, would have passed the rostra, decorated with the spiked heads of Sulla's enemies, as he made his way through the Forum Romanum. The head of his cousin, Marius the Younger, would have been joined by those of Carinus, Censorinus, Asiaticus, Norbanus, and many others who likely had passed through Caesar's home during the years his father held such a high position within the Marian regime. But now, with the Marian party broken, it was Caesar's responsibility to try and navigate his family safely into Sulla's coming future. Finally arriving, Sulla's plan for the priestly young man with the impeccably aristocratic name, became all too clear. As he had done for Pompeius, Sulla now offered Caesar a marriage alliance. All Caesar had to do to ensure his name never appeared on one of Sulla's proscription lists was to divorce his Marian bride, Senilla. Senilla's father was dead. Her brothers and uncles, and every other male relative to whom she might return, were either dead or had fled proscription. Sinilla's female relatives were among the homeless, learning the harsh realities of what it meant to carve out an existence within the mean streets of Rome. All Caesar had to do was to throw Sinilla out into those same streets and close his door to her. Caesar refused to accommodate Sulla's offer. Although historians still debate Caesar's decision to outright defy the ruthless dictator, it should be noted that Caesar actually had both legal and religious law on his side. Because they had shared a spelt cake in the presence of Jupiter and ten witnesses, Caesar's marriage to Senilla was legally deemed a conferratio marriage. Divorce was not an option, ever. Additionally, as Jupiter's personal high priest, the Flamen Dialis, of all people, was the last person who should break this law. Though he could have done so with impunity, Sulla did not order Caesar's immediate death. His entire dictatorship was predicated on the solidification of legal tradition, and Caesar was, in fact, obeying traditional Roman law. Although Sulla may have hesitated over such an offence to Rome's father God, he did add Caesar's name to his next list of prescriptions. But Caesar, knowing what to expect, was long gone from Rome before that list was ever posted in the Forum Romanum. Fleeing into the Italian countryside, Caesar spent several months doing his utmost to keep ahead of anyone willing to turn him over to Sulla's agents. This constant running, and life on the lamb, became even more difficult when the young man contracted malaria. Between bouts of delirious fever, chills, severe dehydration, Caesar still managed to keep on the move, never staying in one place more than a day or so. Unfortunately, Caesar's luck eventually ran out and he was discovered by an agent of Sulla's. As a bribe, Caesar offered the man the total sum of two talents, which would equal approximately $33,000 today. This was the amount the agent would have received for Caesar's capture. The agent took the bribe and disappeared, but Caesar knew he would return the moment that money was tucked away. With all his funds now gone, Caesar could ill afford another encounter with Sulla's henchmen. Packing what little remained to him, Caesar left immediately. In Rome, Caesar's mother, Aurelia Cotta, gathered the members of her family. Her half-brothers and several of her cousins were staunch supporters of Sulla. Aurelia also enlisted the help of Sulla's wife, Dalmatica, who used her considerable influence to bring in the chief Vestal Virgin, Metella Bellarica, along with her five subordinate Vestals. Adding priests of some of the other lesser flaminates, the entire assemblage approached Sulla to beg for Caesar's pardon. Although Sulla finally agreed to pardon Caesar, he is claimed to have warned him all that in the young Caesar, Sulla saw many a Marius. 
for refusing to divorce his wife on Sulla's orders, however, the dictator did exact his penalty. In order to prevent Caesar using it to aid in his career, Sulla confiscated the entirety of Sinilla's dowry. Additionally, having dismantled all the offices illegally created by the Marius Sinner administration, Sulla stripped Caesar of his flaminate, along with the income which the priesthood provided. Interestingly, Sulla did not choose a replacement for Caesar in this priesthood. The Flamen Dialis was a lifelong priesthood, and Jupiter had very strict laws governing his high priest. While Sulla certainly questioned the authenticity of Caesar's illegal appointment by the Marian regime, he simultaneously seemed unwilling to choose Caesar's successor. It's possible Sulla thought Jupiter had been tested enough. With Rome in utter chaos and mass deaths on both sides of the civil war some evidence of the gods' displeasure, Sulla may have decided it was time to leave well enough alone. Although Sulla fined Caesar heavily enough to leave him financially ruined, the office of Flamendialis would remain vacant for the rest of Caesar's life. At last, completely free from the restrictive priesthood to which he had been saddled, Caesar turned his gaze towards a future fraught with personal danger. Despite being pardoned, Sulla's conservative Rome, still recovering from the atrocities committed by Gaius Marius and his son, would not quickly forgive, nor forget, exactly whose nephew Caesar was. And so, once again, Caesar decided to leave Rome. 